Hello everyone and welcome to Secret Society. Now, today's Secret Society meeting is actually about a pop star I didn't know too much about before making this video. Now, I'm sure by now you're all at least somewhat familiar with BB Rexa. Whether you know her for her Twitter moments, awkward fake TikTok music promotion. I'm gonna play this thing for you. I'm gonna get in trouble, but who cares? <laughs> This is or chart-topping Billboard hits that have pulsed throughout every retail chain in the nation. BB Rexa has held her place in pop culture ever since her first major hit, Hey Mama, with David Guetta, Nicki Minaj, and Afrojack. However, such an instant jump to fame never comes without sacrifice, especially in the music scene, which at the time of her rise was mainly dominated by one producer, Dr. Luke. This was the man that Kesha alleged essayed her, striking a long standing legal battle where Kesha faced severe consequences for speaking out against her alleged abuser. Now, BB has had a few less than comfortable run ins with the music industry already, actually, stemming from her first ever hit song, Hey Mama, with Nicki Minaj. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I actually thought that this song was supposed to just be Nicki singing. Like, I'm not trying to hate, I, I genuinely thought that. And let me explain my thought process, because, like, for a period of time, Nicki's singing voice on David Guetta's songs, like, sounded entirely different than her own album's production to me. I've been feeling real, oh, oh I need you to come and rescue me. That you have been playing my heart like a grand piano. Like Turn Me On does not sound like a regular Nicki song to me. I don't know why. It sounds like a completely different altar. <laughs> and I always just sort of attributed that to like David Guetta's music producing style. Like I thought BB Rexa's voice in Hey Mama was Nicki Minaj singing. And I was like, oh, they're just trying out like a new voice again or something. I don't know. <laughs> so after that song, Hey Mama ran its course and then became popular on TikTok with that whole like, yes, I do the cooking, yes, I do the cleaning thing. I don't cook, I don't clean, but let me... <laughs> I went back to revisit it to like see what it was, and I discovered BB Rexa was featured on the song. I had never seen her name on it. And I realized this was kind of an epidemic because I don't think she was listed as a feature initially. And she actually spoke out about this on a podcast. Problem that I think I did in my career, the only thing is that I didn't I wasn't smart enough to like have the right representation, the right team members around me. Team members are so important. Like I love my lawyer right now. I wish I had him then. And then, but then he was around, but then he fought for it after, like, right which when he is started, why they added it. That's later, which is right. why they added it. But like, yeah, like I didn't know. Like we wrote the song in like ten minutes, twenty minutes. Me and Sean Douglas, like, I don't, not the song with Hook. I didn't know. Like I in didn't. That think, process, they called me. I was at. I was. I remember. I remember clearly. I was at Pepsi or something like that, doing like a little showcase for them, and you know, and they were like, "Yeah, you're just on the pre-chorus, like a little part." I was like, "Okay, cool, cleared." Like I didn't know to like. They wouldn't send me the, the vocal. I didn't know. Were you? Hanging out with Geta during any of the process? No, and then they didn't. Even, I, then, and then I, I, Afro, I hit. I, listen, I, I forgive. I texted Afrojack the other day. You know what I mean? I love Geta. I saw him at the Billboard Awards. I have no. You know what right. I mean? I see Nikki. I work with Nikki again. I can't live my life being angry at people. I forgive people, and it is what it is. Like we all fucking make mistakes, and we all want to just be successful, and we want to do the best. And sometimes in this business, you get kind of caught up, and you kind of throw. You know, you 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 focus yeah. on yourself it's human nature whatever the one thing that i feel like i learned in the business is that it did kind of like it broke me a little bit like it it, it, it like i was always this kind of like happy girl who was like yeah i feel like crying right now you can like one, one of the things that's so impressive is that it's so hard it's so hard to write a song that gets to radio and it's so hard to write one that people listen to and then, and it was so, when the second one they happened. Me, like, that killed me because, like, I was working for so long, you know? And you got to do interviews, especially as an artist, because you're in the music business and you don't want to put nobody down because that's not how I grew up, you know? Like, I don't want, like, you can't even at a certain point she isn't about anybody or put people down because then that makes you look like a shit person. But it killed me because I feel like I worked so hard, but I never had, like, I didn't know at the time. They are like, we can't put your name on it because there's too many names on it for radio. I believe that. Right. You're telling me you can't put my name on it? Like, and they shot the video, and they were all, like, in the desert. And I'm, like, hitting up Afrojack and Geta, and they're like, oh, we're shooting something, but it's, like, super private. And then you see the video. Like, that sucks, you know? I just think the thing that, that the reason why I'm upset is, like, I just feel like there's been a lot of situations that were, like, you know, I was, like, kind of, like, this happy-go-lucky girl and, like, kind of, like, really excited about music. And then I feel like kind of broke me a little bit, you know? Yeah. But like, whatever it is, what it is, like, 
th that's what that's what it makes me who I am, you know? So sometimes when I'm misunderstood and I work with these big producers or people and they just want to judge you right off the bat, it's like, you don't know my story. You don't know where I come from. And I refuse to be like this bitter person, you know? But like, does it make me emotional? And, and do I feel hurt sometimes? And I got to lie in interviews and say I'm best friends with everybody? Yeah, because I'm not going to go bashing people around. I don't feel like that's the way. You got to forgive. He might have got me the credit after it hit billboard number six or whatever it was. I never paid attention. I don't know what the hell, but I knew it was like a good, it did well. But like he got it for me and you know, it kind of let me sleep at night a little bit better. Now, this isn't the first time David Guetta has done this. If you watch the Chaotic Web episode on Sia, we get into the nitty gritty of Titanium and just how David Guetta low-key released that without any permission from Sia at all. We had this session. At first we were working like we're gonna, we're gonna write a song for an another artist and I was I was there working as a producer and she was there working as a songwriter and then Titanium she came with those insane lyrics no one can do better than this conclusion number one I'm not giving this record to anyone and I'm keeping this record for myself and conclusion number two please stay on the record because I already know no one can beat this I really had to beg her and almost force her and I, and you know she was like no I don't want this so we agreed on yes she's gonna stay on the record but she will not do any promo she will not do any interview she will not be in the video and she will not have to tour or support the record in any way because all she wants is write songs stay home and have a quiet life <laughs> it's really funny when you think about it and what became her career after that now, I'm not trying to compare artists here, but career-wise, BB Rexa is sort of like Zara Larson and Skylar Grey, a session singer who would feature on a bunch of EDM songs. But she honestly has grown out of that and is attempting to craft her own personal musical pop star identity, including a new album that didn't like perform super well commercially, and I don't mean that in a rude way, but it's actually a sentiment that she echoed on Twitter. And her attitude about the flop was pretty commendable. Now, it's unclear if she's been blackballed now that she's spoken out about her experience in the music industry like you all saw in that clip that went pretty viral but it all could be because of a certain doctor and a certain label called prescription again this is just speculation i don't know but yes i am referring to lucas gottwald also known as dr luke now, in her early days, as BB Rexa was making her way through the music scene as an aspiring songwriter and recording artist, it was only a matter of time before she crossed paths with a disgraced producer. As we learned from the Me Too movement, much of the entertainment industry is rampant with predators and their secrets, which are often used to silence artists and scare them out of speaking their truth. At the time of Kesha making allegations against Dr. Luke, many of her celebrity peers who she was hoping would come to her defense remained entirely silent. Some others celebrities did show their support for her, including Lady Gaga, who famously testified in court for Kesha. But many don't know that Bibi Rexa also spoke out against Dr. Luke in the heat of the lawsuit, all while her fellow artists refused to use their voices to defend Kesha. In 2021, Bibi Rexa spoke with Cosmopolitan about the traumatizing experiences she had with multiple producers, including an encounter at Dr. Luke's Los Angeles home that occurred just after he had flown her out for her big break, leaving her unsettled to say the least. She told the publication, when I first got to LA, I worked with a very big producer. He put me in a room with lots of other songwriters and engineers who all seemed to on jokes. One, which y'all, girl, yeah, yeah, they're songwriters. Like, I'm not trying to, like, blame anybody here, but, like, I mean, yeah, like, they're gonna be on right? Like, they're songwriters. That's their job, kind of, right? I don't know. I don't know. A little bit. Yeah. I'm just gonna say that, yeah. <laughs> like, girl, I'm, I don't know why that's, like, a shock, but I guess, I guess, like, the average Cosmopolitan reader, like, at the grocery store, like, my mom, I feel like she'd be like, oh my god, like, BB Rex doesn't, no, probably not, though. I feel like she knows, you know what I mean? But the general public, I feel like, knows that, like, music producers are doing drugs. I don't know. Anyway, one writer walked in and said, listen, you have no hits, but I have loads, so I'm going to go downstairs and party with my friends, and you're gonna write a song, record the vocals, and edit it. That will be our song that we wrote together. And this statement sounds so eerily similar to a different situation in 2021 in which Doja Cat, who signed to Dr. Luke at only 17 years old, had alleged that he had stolen credits on songs that he had never worked on. While also questioning and later retracting how much of a hand he had in crafting her hits, Doja told the magazine, I haven't worked with him in a very long time. There's that he's credited for where I'm like, hmm, I don't know. I don't know if you did anything on that. 
adding, the point is he's gotten some credit for sh and you know, it's whatever. I don't think I need to work with him again. I don't think I need to work with him in the future. The singer sent a follow-up email to the writer through a rep in which she said she may have said something that someone could interpret as me saying that he had taken credit on things he didn't deserve to. Adding, I just want to be clear that I have no first-hand knowledge of that being the case, and I don't want to participate in the rumor mill. The credits on my music are accurate, and I don't want to imply anything else. BB continued to say that at a later date, Kesha's own mother, PB Sebert, had given her a disturbing warning when the two met at a dinner party. She divulged this when an interviewer asked her about Kesha's case, BB saying, I was scared that that could have been my situation. I remember being at a dinner party with Kesha and her mother, PB Sebert. Her mom came up to me and whispered, don't do it. She was talking about working with Dr. Luke. The music industry can be a dark place and she could have been trying to stop me from getting in her daughter's way. But I listened and honestly, trusting her was the best thing that I ever did. Now, while this was the full extent of her interactions with Dr. Luke that she spoke about, she did discuss other alarming situations that she was put in, further illustrating the dangerous dynamic of being a woman in the music scene. She described one uncomfortable situation, saying there was a producer who would come into the studio and massage my feet. One time, he tried to go above my knees and was getting a little rough, so I pulled my feet away. He said, nah, I'm going to do what I want. But I was raised to never let someone touch my body if I didn't want them to. She divulged to Cosmopolitan that the same producer later had his assistant call her in the middle of the night, claiming that said producer wanted to buy BB a sundress to wear with, quote, no underwear. She explains that the producer was really famous and that her former managers told her, just work with him. You need a hit song. Sadly, this was just another example of many experiences BB endured, one of which caused her to fear for her very life saying, quote, There was one night I was alone in the studio and a different producer had a group of five or six guys with him. I had heard things about him from his past and I just couldn't take it anymore. I felt like I was going to get assaulted. I quietly called myself a taxi from the recording booth, which was enclosed, and I got the f*** out of there. It was the worst night Ever. Now, I feel absolutely awful for BB having to go through this. I mean, no woman should feel like she needs to put herself in a compromising position for her career. And honestly, it is very commendable that she chooses to raise awareness for these types of situations because Hollywood is so so wrapped up with each other. I mean, BB could have like five friends that are working with Dr. Luke tomorrow and she has to pretend like parasocially that she's not saying these things. Like this was very brave of her to come out with, with someone who's so huge. And in 2018, she even started an initiative called Women in Harmony, where she basically united a bunch of female artists over a dinner where they could come together. The first time I was in the recording studio with a female producer, there was this energy and power in the session I had never experienced before. And I wanted more of that. So much so that I started Women in Harmony to bring some of the most talented women in the music industry together. You know, the statistics in the women in the music business is insane. Like, you know, only like two per women producers put out songs last year that were like on the radio. So I always thought that was not cool at all. So we're just trying to uplift each other and make room for other females, creatives that are trying to come into the industry. So they feel welcomed. Um, so uh, that's why I decided to do that. Charlie XCX, a British pop star, was in attendance and was quoted by Billboard saying, we're at a time where celebrating women is of utmost importance. And I think everybody in this room has always been a champion of female empowerment especially showing it isn't just men who sit behind the scenes, which is common perception in the music industry. This is a room of amazingly talented songwriters who have multiple Billboard number ones. I just walked in and I've already seen five or six women I've collaborated with in the studio in the last couple of weeks. It's important to shine a light on this community that doesn't always get a lot of coverage. Songwriter Ali Timposi, who wrote the song Comfortable with BB Rexa, was quoted at the dinner saying, with the hashtag Time's Up and hashtag Me Too movements, I think there's really room to write about that and bring awareness through music. With more women writing together, we'll have this collaborative energy to share an important message that more women can relate to. 
Now that is so important and I'm so glad they're taking this initiative to do that because like y'all, that is the way that things change. We need music, we need movies, we need stories. People need to share their experiences and the way they know how to communicate. But y'all, this ends a little bit grim, so buckle up. While I was looking at the group photo of the dinner that was supposed to unite women against the abusive men in the industry, I was shocked to find none other than Dr. Luke's longtime client, Kim Petras, in attendance. Like y'all, maybe she didn't get the memo about the event's theme or something, but she is known for being one of the only artists to basically outright call Kesha a liar. Were you surprised by the reaction about your comments about Dr. Luke? Um, well, it was very much, uh, I felt bad for involving Troy. You spoken to Kesha? Have you spoken to anyone about her? No, no, but I, I wish her all the best, and I think she's amazing and very talented and amazing. I did get questions about um, Dr. Luke, and I didn't really want to get into that, but I did, mm -hmm. as a fan myself, yeah. wanted to ask you, because I feel like out of all the like guys and gals that have worked with him, for whatever reason, you seem to get the most, I feel, the most backlash. Like, is that even on your radar, or how do you react to that when it comes because i feel like it um, comes anytime you put something out yeah I, I mean i try just not to like little have that have hate on my radar i think i, I just try to focus on like making good music and y'all i don't know like let me know what y'all think in the comments should kim have just maybe sat this one out or like should women in unity also include like r word apologists and victim blamers i don't know anyway that's all i have for today and thank you all so much for coming to the secret society meeting this is sort of a mini meeting but i wanted to talk about this because we found all this research when researching for the original dr luke video about kelly clarkson so be sure to check that out it is so so deep i go into a lot of the artists that dr luke has worked with i go into kelly clarkson's relationship with him and it is wild and there's this must watch interview in there y'all like it is insane and also i don't know if this video is out by the time i'm uploading this video however i am working on a new video about dr luke's water company core water and just how she overcame the water giant anyway thank you all so much for coming to this meeting and i will see you all in the next one bye